Astro is gaining a lot of momentum as an excellent framework for building modern, high-performance websites. And while it has great image handling built in, it does have a few problems. In this video, we're gonna look at four specific problems you can run into when you're using framework-specific image handling, whether it's Astro, Nuxt, Next, or any of the others. And then we're gonna look at how we can solve those problems using a combination of Cloudinary and Unpick. So before we can get started, we're going to download the starter repo, and the repo is here. It's at Learn with Jason Cloudinary Site Images, and we're going to be using the start branch. So I've got that pulled down. I'm on the start branch, and we can see here that we've got our first file, which is the 01 basic.astro in the source pages directory. So first, let's get our heads around how Astro handles images without dependencies. First thing, is that you can import any image from your file system. In this case, we've got one in an images folder that we pulled from Unsplash, and we're gonna save that as a variable called local image. Then we're gonna import the image component out of Astro Assets, that's built into the framework, and then we're going to use this image component, pass in the local image path, set up our alt text, our width and our height, and that's basically it. The one thing that's worth noting here is that we do have to add this widths attribute, which tells it to use a source set. So from here, if we start up our dev server, if we open it up in our browser, now we can see that we're on the 01 basic page and we've got our image loading. If we inspect this, we can see that Astro has generated an image tag. We gave it width, so we've got our source set here. Now. This is a development instance, so we've got a few extra pieces here, like the data image component, we've got a data astro source file, and so on. So if we instead build this, then we can come out here and look into our dist folder, and we'll see in our 01 basic that the image has a source, it's got a source set, and then down here a little ways, we've got our alt text, we have the loading setup, decoding, and sizes, all the things we need to make our site load as quickly as possible. This is great, and it is perfectly acceptable to ship just this. However, as a site grows, or if you're working on a larger team, there are a couple things that are gonna show up that can cause challenges as you scale. The first is that these images are generated as part of your local build. Every time the site gets built, these assets will get generated again and delivered as part of your static bundle. This is fine, but as sites get larger, this means a lot of extra bandwidth, it means extra time for your users to wait for things to download, and it can just kind of be one of those paper cuts that makes things a little bit worse. And if you have multiple web properties, with this approach, it doesn't matter whether they're all Astro or whether they're a mix of React, Astro, Svelte, Vue, et cetera, you will always have a separate instance of this file per property. And that means that you're still spending a little more time downloading something that could theoretically be cached. Third, and this one's minor, you have to add an extra widths attribute, which isn't a problem, it's not hard. The catch is that you have to train everybody on your team to do it, and you have to put some kind of check in place to make sure that it's there, otherwise you're not getting those responsive images out of the box. And finally, you're not getting placeholders for those images. And no, this is a nice to have, you don't need this, but, on sites that use a lot of images, when there is a slow network, whether that means that your customers are on low power devices in rural areas, or whether it means that your customer is on a high powered device and they're just going through a subway tunnel in a major metropolitan area, there will be these blank spaces on the site while it waits for those images to download. A placeholder can make that a little less jarring and can make the site feel a little more complete even when things are still downloading. None of these things are really problems. They're just small things that can add up to make the site feel a little bit slower. So in my mind, it's worth a little bit of extra effort to polish these up. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to use Cloudinary and Unpick, which I'll explain a little bit more as we get to them, to add an extra layer of polish that solves these four problems and, as a little bonus, adds extra features that we can use to make our sites even better. So let's dive in. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we have Unpick and Cloudinary installed in our site. To get us configured, we're gonna go ahead and create API keys. Now, for this particular tutorial, we're not gonna need an API key or secret, but if you're following along with this series, you will need them later, so you might as well get them all in one fell swoop. 
However, if you just want to set the cloud name, that's all you're going to need to generate a URL. In your Cloudinary console, if you head down to the settings and go to your API keys, it's going to show you your cloud name up top, which we're going to store as Cloudinary cloud name. And then we're going to generate a new API key, and it will give you an API key, which is publicly available. People can see that. And a secret, which we can then copy out of here and put into Cloudinary API secret. Once you've done that, save these keys, and we are off to the races. Let's go ahead and switch this over to using the Cloudinary CDN. To do that, we are going to first bring in the Cloudinary package. We import v2 as Cloudinary. Then we're going to configure it. So we've stored our cloud name into the environment. We're going to need that for generating URLs. Once we've got that, we need an asset. So over in our Cloudinary dashboard, we've uploaded that same image. And we can see up here that it is in our Cloudinary Images folder. We've got a public ID on it there. In my case, I use the folder names. Depending on when your Cloudinary account was created, you may be in dynamic folder mode. Um, if you're not sure what that means, check the link in the description. So the way this works is Cloudinary has a .url method. We pass in the public ID of an image, and then we can pass an object with additional pieces. And one of the things that we can configure is the transformation. So we're going to use two automatic transformations that in my mind are kind of must-haves because they're free performance gains. So the quality transformation, when it's set to auto, will slightly adjust the quality of the image down a little bit. However, I've never noticed that difference, and it tends to lead to quite a bit of reduction in file size. And then the format auto will do content negotiation, which checks with the requesting device for what types of images it supports and then delivers the most performant version. So even if you have a JPEG, the browser might accept WebP, in which case Cloudinary will actually send an optimized WebP, which is much smaller than a JPEG would be. And now that we've got that image from the CDN, we can get rid of the local image and swap out the image source down here for our image CDN. And if we save that and head back out to the browser, we can now see when we inspect that we're getting that image delivered via CDN. However, something happens here, and let's watch. If I stop the dev server and I run a build, when I open up this index file, look at what's happened. We're using this local Astro folder again. So even though we started out on Cloudinary, Astro is pulling that asset down locally, which brings us back to that original challenge, which is that our images are being generated per deploy, which isn't necessarily the best move for caching. So to fix that, we're going to swap over and use Unpick. Unpick is a toolkit. It was built by Matt Kane, who has actually joined the Astro team now. And its entire purpose is making images work a little bit better, no matter what framework you're using. In most cases, it's a drop-in replacement. So we want to go ahead and configure that in our Astro site. So we're going to open up the astro.config, and we need to make sure that the Unpick Astro service is being imported. And then here in our config, we need to add the image attribute. And inside, we pass an object that includes the service using that unpick service. With that config in place, we can swap out the Astro image component for the one from unpick. So our first step is to bring in image from unpick Astro instead. And now that we're importing from unpick, we can look down here and we see that this widths attribute is no longer valid. So we can delete that. And then while we're in here editing things, why don't we go ahead and include a placeholder. And inside here, we can look and see what our options are. And we get blur hash, dominant color, LKIP, or none. We're going to use blur hash because it's pretty performant and also looks nice. So I'll make sure my site is running. And then I'm going to head out to the browser. And I'm going to throttle my network. And I've got the cache disabled. I'm down to 3G. And I'm going to reload. And you can see how now we've got this kind of blurred version of the image that comes in to take up space on the page before that image is loaded. Finally, let's give this a shot and see how much of a difference it makes in our build. So let's run a build. Now that that's built, and we look at this output, here's our image. And we can see that Unpick gave us the same things. We're still doing loading lazy. We're still doing decoding async. We've still got the sizes. And we've got our source set down here. But a couple things have changed. So the first thing you're going to notice is this hash. That's the blur hash, which is that placeholder image. And you can see how small it is. So it's you know a pretty cheap thing to add for a little quality of life improvement for your users. 
And then in the source set, we're actually using the Cloudinary URLs, which means that we're now serving from the image CDN. And if we have this same image on other sites, as long as the transformations are the same, it's gonna get that same cache. So we have a URL-based cache instead of a web property-based cache. And that is a small but can be significant thing if you're going across lots of web properties, or in this case, if you just have lots of deploys, you wanna make sure that we're not regenerating all these assets on every deploy and making our users re-download the same image on every deploy. So we've barely dipped our toes into what Cloudinary and Unpick are capable of here, but you can see that with just a couple small changes in our code base, we've been able to make small but very notable improvements to the way that images are being handled inside of our Astro sites. So as this series continues, you're gonna learn a lot of incremental improvements we can make using tools like Cloudinary and Unpick that will improve your life and the lives of your users, all for very little overall effort. Stay tuned. We'll see you in the next one.